And we are live. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever it is you are hailing from. Let me see here. Let me check everything. Everyone is all good. Oh no, my timer's not up. I need my timer. Move my timer. Stop my timer. I need, I need butts. That's my little program that I use to log on and off the radio. So here we go. <clears throat> Might have started my timer a little soon, but that's okay. 102. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ralph Peterson Radio Show. I am so excited to be here, so excited you have joined the show today. We have such a big show. It's going to be a fun show today. I got to tell you, coming into work this morning, it was snowing. Now, not a lot of snow, and you kind of had to look hard and kind of had to peer through the windshield a little bit. Actually, my wife called she said, hey, I just want to let you know that I think it's snowing out there. And I was like, really? She left before I did. And then sure enough, out on the interstate, there it is, a little fleckling of snow. And all right. So for those of you who have been buried in snow for weeks, you're probably tired of it. Fine. For those of you who don't like snow and you live in a part of the country, a part of the world that doesn't get snow, fine. For me, I got to tell you, my heart does a little pitter-patter. I get a little skip in my step. I really, 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 really enjoy a little bit of snowfall. I like it so much. It is, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when I was a kid, you know, when you, you'd you see the, you even see it in movies where there's always like this nostalgic thing where a kid, the first snow comes outside the window and all the kids in the class get distracted by it and soon they all run up to the window and they're like, oh, snow. And the teacher, of course, is just kind of like, yeah, it's snow. You sit back down, take your seats. We're, we're doing a math test, you know. I think it's the same thing for me. I feel the same way every time. It reminds me of, you know, you think about the snow and it's just falling, especially it's December. It's December 8th today. It, the, the snow is falling on the ground. You, you're going to go sliding. We used to have this place by my house when I was a kid called Dead Man's Curve. Like, <laughs> And you'd think that would be a deterrent. Like when you have a... When you have a, a sledding place called Dead Man's Curve, you think, there's no chance I'm going to go there. Well, the line was long, my friends, and we all loved going sliding down Dead Man's Curve because it was dangerous, it was fast, and it was fun, and it was exhilarating. And then, of course, Christmas is coming and snowball fights. And I mean, how can you not get jazzed up about the first snow that you see of the year? All right, well, maybe it's a little too much about the snow. Hello, welcome to the Ralph Peterson Radio Show, where we are not... We are not, my friends, going to be talking about snowfall. I guarantee it. Nope, we're going to be talking about business operations. Everything to do with business operations is going to be the focus of today's program and the focus of all of the programs going forward. It is such an interesting and important topic. As a matter of fact, I have a story. I have a story I'm going to share with you today about why 2021 may be the year for you. It may be the year for you. I'm going to tell you, 2021 may just be the year that you decide you're going to go out on your own. You decide you're going to start your own business. There are a few reasons on why you should consider 2021 as the year for you. Now, I know that there might be some of you who are shaking your head like there's no chance I ever want to go out on my own. But I also know that there's some of you listening right now who have just been dying and chomping at the bit to get on your own. And you just been dealing with the same stuff in and out and dealing with the same companies and you know you have a good idea and it's worth something and you wish you could you uh, you wish you weren't scared if i had if i could tell you something that you know you ever play that game where you you can play it two ways you could either play it like if you won the lottery what's something that you would immediately do 
or you could play it. If you had, could have any superpower, what would you ever have? The, the whole superpower thing, I got to tell you, for years and years and years, I would have told you if I were being honest with you. And you said, if you could have any superpower, what would it have? It wouldn't be all the classy ones. It wouldn't be like flying or seeing through walls or leaping tall buildings in a single bound. No, no, no. For me, if I could do, if I could have any superpower, I would be fearless. Fearless. I Fear crippled me. It, it, it nearly every turn I took from what I thought people thought of me to whether or not I was good enough to whether or not I could make money on my own and be successful. If people would read my writing and think it was good or people would laugh at me or make fun of me or not take me seriously or not like me. I mean, I think I was, I, I mean this sincerely. I think I grew up scared of nearly everything. And it wasn't until I had decided to go out on my own to just take the golden leap or like take break the golden handcuffs and just go on my own until I decided to do that. That was the only time in my life where I wasn't scared. Now, I was scared leading all the way up to that time. But as soon as I made the leap, I was no longer scared. It might be it might be a point to note that I was too busy to be scared because when you start your own business, you ever heard that? You ever heard that phrase? If you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. Well, let me tell you something. I am doing what I love and I'm working 24 seven. And that's exactly what happens. You start, if you decide to go out on your own, if you make 2021 your year to break away, to break free, to create something new, to start a new adventure, I'm telling you right now, you are going to, if, if it's something you're super passionate about, you are going to, you're not going to fall head over heels. You're going to dive head first. That's what it right. We're talking about diving head first into this new business adventure of yours. And I say, let's go, let's get into it. I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited. I think the, the article that I have about 2021 is super great. So that's what I say. Fear is going to hold you back until it doesn't. Once it doesn't hold you back, my friends, man, does it not hold you back. So before we get too far into this, before I go off on another tangent, let me go ahead and bring us back to reality here. We are on the IBGR network and therefore have to pay a couple of bills. If you would like to be part of this program, you can do so in a couple of ways. First, if you would like to just simply listen to the show, by oh my gosh, if you wanna to listen to the show in your pocket, let's say that you decide that you love listening to the Ralph Peterson radio show, you could listen to Ralph all day. I've had people say, I could listen to you all day. All right, it was my mom, but she really appreciates me. If you want to listen to me all day, but you are, you can't just be sitting at your computer all the time staring at my mug. We now have an app. We have an IBGR radio application. You can go into your into your app folder, into your app finder, and go in and type in IBGR, and you will find the IBGR network radio application for your phone, for your iPhone, for your iOS. It is amazing. You can just go there, put it in your pocket and go, I don't know, mow the lawn, go for a run, go for a walk, pretend you're working at your desk. No, don't do that. Don't pretend you're working. Either work or don't work, but don't pretend. <laughs> the IBGR app is free. It's available right now and it is super, super exciting. It makes it makes everything that we all do here at the IBGR radio Profit radio station. It makes everything we do uh, all that more convenient and all that more, all that more. What's the word I'm looking for when you can travel, when you can take me, take us with you, take us with you, whatever that turn of phrase is. So we're very excited about the new app. So go get the app, download the app. You can favorite shows. And of course, you need to favorite Ralph Peterson, the Ralph Peterson radio show. If you would like to do other things. If you want to listen to past shows, past episodes of the Ralph Peterson radio show are at, you can go to IBGR, go to IBGR.network, go to the community of commerce, become a member of the community of commerce down. You can download all the past shows they are in podcast form. Also, we also put all the past shows up at Ralph Peterson podcast.com. That's where all the past radio shows are, all the past podcasts are that we're doing. By the way, we have a bunch of very exciting podcasts that we're going to be guests on coming up here at the end of this week. So we're very excited about that. Also, we are live streaming right this second. If you want to see what it is I look like, and actually I'm 
I'm undercover, deep undercover. No, I'm I'm recording from an office that is not mine. This is not my office. I had to bribe someone to let me use their office so I can conduct their radio show. So I'm on a remote location, a secret remote location. I'm surrounded by PPE, if that knows your name, that's personal protective equipment. Once you're around, you're surrounded by personal protective equipment. It kind of gives it away where you might be broadcasting from deep in the bowels of some type of health facility. And that's where I am today. So I'm very excited to be here. If you would like to watch me or watch me perform the show, be on the show. If you want to participate on the show, we have a bunch of different ways. So first on social media, we are live on Twitter. We're live on we are live on YouTube and we're live on Facebook, both at Ralph Peterson and we are live at IBGR. So if either one of those, pick your favorite platform, pick the person you want to follow the most and please come along and enjoy the ride with us. It's going to be a really, really fun jam-packed show for you today. Also, if you go to IBGR.network on the bottom right-hand corner of the page, there is a question mark, a flashing question mark. And that's where you can interact with us directly. You can send us texts, you can send emojis, you can just write down kind of leaving a comment if you'd like and do anything you would like to do. There is the place to do it. Or you can leave comments right on this live stream in any one of those other social medias that I was talking to you about and you can find us all right there. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the show. What are we talking about today? What is the topic? Again, it's all about business. It's all about programming and it's all about operational effectiveness. Operational effectiveness, such an important topic because from a consumer point of view, let's just imagine for an instance that you are a consumer. You're somebody who wants to go to the gas station and fill your gas tank, but it's cold outside and you don't want to get out of the car. You want somebody to pump it for you. And while you're there, the back windshield wiper on your on your vehicle isn't working very well. And it would be really great if somebody could take a look at that. Now, it's possible to happen. You can literally find a gas station where you don't have to get out of the car. Not only will they pump the gas for you, but they clean your windshield. They will notice that you have a windshield wiper problem in the back of the window, and they will ask if you would like to replace it. And guess what they have inside their little store there? They have a windshield wiper. The right size, the right fit, and they'll take two seconds and put it on your vehicle. That, my friends, is called operational effectiveness. That is where the rubber meets the road. If you have ever enjoyed that kind of service where you've walked into a place You've gotten what you needed to get and more. Very easy. Didn't have to go to multiple places, multiple locations, ask 10 people for the same thing. You've got to know that the only reason you were able to do that is because that business has taken operational effectiveness seriously. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today's episode of the Ralph Peterson Radio Show. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Da, da, da. Where's my Slack? Okay, so Slack is good, loud and clear on Slack. India, how is everything? Let me pull up my, oh, you know what? I'm going to have too many screens open if I do this. Um, okay, India, can you not hear me? Let me see here. Can you hear me? I should be live. I thought I was live. I am live. Hmm. Hopefully, India is going to respond to me in a quick second here so I can be rest assured that we're okay. She is all good. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're giving me a little bit of a heart attack there. Giving me a little bit of a heart attack. Don't need any of that this fine afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well. I'm just going through my notes, trying to figure out where we're going on the next segment of the radio show. I usually have multiple screens, and today I have a single screen. And when you only have a single screen, it makes it tough. And so we want to be back in at 14, 17, 30. 17, 30. Okay, okay, okay.
All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ralph Peterson Radio Show. We are very excited to have you. It's going to be a big show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, go to ibgr.network if you want to join in the fun. Make sure you go get the app. Go to the App Store. Download IBGR at Radio App so you can take me, take us all, wherever you want to go. Keep in mind, this radio station is for business owners by business owners. Everything that we talk about on this radio station is the things that we're talking about when we are not on the radio station. We talk about these same issues, these same challenges, trying to get better every single day. And that's what this radio station is for. That's what this radio show is for. It's all about getting better. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but IBGR is, I should mention this, IBGR is not only not only are we growing like crazy, we're really, really growing like crazy. I think we're in like almost 160 countries at this point. We're broadcasting nearly 24 seven. At the same time, we do have some there, they are recruiting for talent. So if you have a, if you have a passionate message, if you have a business, if you're a business owner and you want to expand in your business, you want to share your knowledge, you want to, have you ever thought about maybe exploring what it would be like to be a radio host like myself and like others on this station, we are looking for some great people who have some great knowledge to share. So reach out to us if that is something you reach out to me personally, reach out to me personally, if you have any desire to learn more about that, and I'll put you in touch with the right people at the right time. So you know what you're supposed to be doing. There's so many breaking, there's so much news going on. You know, again, I said it last week. I'll say it this week. I'll say it all the time. I check the news so you don't have to, because one of the worst things that you can be doing, especially if you're in business is spending time looking at the news. It's always so negative and so downer and so back and forth. It just gets, it, talk about back and forth. There is a story. There is a story. Doracell, this, this is the headline. Doracell, the battery maker, and Energizer, the other battery maker, and lawsuits over battery life claim. <laughs> I feel like I got caught in like one of those, he said, she said. This is This is quite literally... Duracell sues Energizer because Energizer were like, our battery lasts longer than Duracell. And then Energizer sues Duracell because Duracell said, our battery lasts longer than Energizer. And they're like, you're making a false claim. And then they're like, no, no, you're making a false claim. And go, no, uh, uh, go, uh, uh, no, no, uh, 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 uh. I'm like, oh my good Lord. So they ended, they ended their, uh, their little spat between themselves, which is nice. That's always good to hear, you know, when companies decide to finally get over themselves. That's really great. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't mean to dismiss legality if you're not being clear, if you're being dishonest about your battery life. I'm glad. You know what? That's actually, when I first read the story, I thought it was funny. I printed it. I wanted to share it. I was like, that's hilarious. At the same time, I got to say, like, that is a great representative of the importance in how capitalism works really good, right? Because you don't have to wait for it. I'll tell you what, there's two groups of people that are going to call you out on your fibbing as a business. And one's going to be the people, your customers, and the other is going to be your competition. Like, they're not going to let you get away with any tomfoolery, right? If there's if it's free and open market and there's a free and open competition going on, I'm going to I'm gonna point out anytime you're trying to fib or lie or make stuff up or put yourself in a better light than you actually are, I'll just call you on it. It's a great thing about shutting it down. Shutting it down, my friends. Shutting it down. This story, though, this story, this story is, again, one of those stories I thought was funny when I first read it. 15 law students notified 
that they did not pass the bar exam after they were told they did indeed pass the bar exam. Come on, that's fun for everybody. That's that's not even the worst part. Like that's funny that 15 law students were notified that they first were told that they won. And then they're like, oh, a day later, like two days later, they're like, um, pardon me, we made a math error and we kind of counted the date into your score. And I don't know that it was that, but it was something as silly as that. And so we, we gave you a date or we gave you a score that you shouldn't have earned. And so you actually didn't pass the bar exam. And so if you would go ahead and do us a favor, would you please, um, you know, go study some more. Maybe we'll give you a discount on the next bar exam that you can take in six months, whatever. But that's that's funny, right? Like it's, I mean, it wouldn't be funny if I were one of the 15 students and I was out partying because I was celebrating and, you know, cleaning off my resume and then finds out that I actually didn't do enough. The worst part about this story is it's buried. Why they bury the best part of these stories? I don't know. It's buried on the, the last page of this story is there's actually 18, it was actually 18 people, 18 applicants who were informed that there was an error. And only 15 was because they, they were told they, they passed when they had actually failed. But there were three who had passed and they were told that they failed. And I don't know about you, but I think, I think that's worse. I, I think I would have, I mean, talk about, talk about a kick. I mean, if you, we're told you didn't pass and you did pass actually. I don't know. I don't know why it's worse for me, but it just, it's, it's just worse for me. So I didn't like it, but it's buried. Whatever. What are you going to do? There you go. Sometimes you have to check those, those test scores. So when we're talking about operation management, operation efficiency, I got to tell you the the idea that it took them a day or two to find those errors actually is a pretty positive because how many times have you ever gone back after you have reviewed a test for the first time? If you grade, if you've ever graded a test or graded somebody's work, how often do you go back and regrade it? Probably never. And so they had a really good process in place where it seems like they had a mechanism in place, an operational effectiveness to the degree that after the initial tests were scored, somebody went in and did an audit. Somebody went in and said, hey, let's look at these once again. I don't know if there was an anomaly. It doesn't say if there was an anomaly that they found or they suspected. It just seems like they just decided to relook at all the test scores as if somebody had already put a process in place that once test scores were taken, they're going to re relook at them again to make sure that they didn't make any errors. That Again, it's actually from a business point of view, it's a pretty, that's a telling, that's really, really great because part of being, part of having your operational effectiveness, part of trying to make sure that you're, and let's talk about it like this. First of all, when we're talking about operational effectiveness, we should all understand that the whole point behind operational effectiveness is to make sure that you are providing the service or the product in the, in a direct timely manner in the way that it's supposed to be delivered in the way that your customer wants it. Having operational effectiveness is the difference maker between being successful oftentimes and not being successful. Of course, there are other factors. There's markets and as a factor, staffing can be a factor. Buyers can be a factor. Pricing can be a factor. There are factors, of course, to, to determine whether or not you're going to be successful in whatever business you're trying to get into. But if you don't pay attention to the operational effectiveness of your organization, if you're not in the weeds, if you're not getting in there and trying to find those best practices, I'm working with a working with a group right now. We're talking about how do you how do you find and share best practices? And then when you're when you consider that, how do you find and share best practices in your organization? You got to also consider that there's two different places that we can be talking about. We're talking about internal best practices that is your staff find things that are they're finding ways to do things better and better which by the way that is a hard one to capture and i'll tell you why it's a hard one to capture because anytime you're talking about making things easier for staff staff tend to not want to share those shortcuts with management. And the reason they don't want to sh share those shortcuts with management, well, a couple of reasons, probably a dozen reasons, but top of my, top of my head, number one is they don't want to get in trouble. 
you know, a lot of times you're doing something and you decided you find a shortcut. You don't know if you're allowed to take the shortcut. And so you don't want to get in trouble. So that's the reason why you don't share it. And the other reason why you don't share it, it reminds me of this story from the early iron workers, the early iron workers in like the early 1900s, late 1800s, 1900s. All these workers had these fantastic tools that they had created that just made things safer and faster and easier. Oh yes, they were making tools that made their jobs easier. And so it gave them more downtime. And you know what a manager does not tolerate is downtime. And so they were never, they were always weary of showing these tips and tricks and tools to their managers because they didn't want the manager to then expect them to be able to do more. So that was, there's always been this battle between employees and management when it comes to sharing those best practices internally. But then that's not the only place you can get and learn best practices. You can learn it externally. And indeed, listening to this radio program on a weekly basis or any of these radio programs on the IBGR network, this is how you, this is one way to gain external information. This is how you get external best practices. I'm talking about some best practices here and there and others are as well. And there's, you can do the same by reading books, going to attending conferences, we go into supply vendors. You know, if you, everybody has different vendors, you, you wouldn't believe how much information is at your fingertips. If you have, I don't care if you have one vendor that you're dealing with, one supplier that supplies your goods or service, or part of your goods or services, or even supplies your food or supply anything to your office or to your organization, I guarantee they have, they are, they are really good at having their own information because they're always wanting to be a resource, a valuable resource to their customers. And so I often find one of the most valuable places that I get external best practices where I learn external best practices is from my vendors, from people outside of my organization. That's not to say I don't learn them internally. I do, but that's a cultural thing too. You've got to make it, you've got to make, you got to work on your internal culture to make it so that people are not going to get penalized for, you know, quote unquote, breaking rules or not following processes. And it's got to be that kind of an organization, that kind of business where you can get that kind of transparency with your staff. And then you will be amazed at how much they will be sharing with you for best practices. It's the right move. I guarantee more of this brilliant monologue right after this. <sighs> How's everyone doing? All right. India's good. You didn't see me at first, but now you do. All right. All right. That's good. Let me talk to Mr. Bill, program director. Good Lord. I, I, uh, am I the only one who suffers from fat fingers? You wouldn't know it, but it's my stupid pinky. It's my fat pinky. It's not a fat pinky, but I'm always tripping up on my pinky for some reason. When I type, I type. I try to type too fast and I'm not that good. So, you know, that's what happens. All right. India gives me the thumbs up. I like that. See, she's got a fat thumb she's showing me. Good for you. 130. We're going to one. 132.30. One thirty two thirty. I think the way that we're going to go for the next segment is we're going to talk about Ikea, Australia. And you know what? For giggles, we'll throw in a little China. Why not? Ikea. Australia, China, China, talk about some China.
China, China, China. Oh, what did they say? I said IKEA, Australia, China. Should put the stack in the right order. That would make a little more sense. All right, program director says he is fine. That's all good. We like that. Everything's loud and clear on his end. We hit the 32 mark, which means we are 30 seconds away. Starting the timer, here we go. And we're back to Ralph Peterson Radio Show. Thank you so much again for joining me. We only got a couple of segments left and a lot, a lot, a lot to get through. Again, it, one, one thing that I, I want to say once again is I want to thank IBGR Network. If you are in any kind of business, you got to know that Tuesday is just about operations, but every day of the week is a different day of the week. So there's, did I just say every day of the week is a different day of the week? All right. Well, I did say it and I, well, I'm, I'm sticking by it. That's right. I did. Yes. Every day of the week is <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, sometimes every day of the week. There is a different focus for this radio station. There is a sales focus, a marketing focus, a focus, a people where a management people focus and operations focus. So every day is something different. So that's why you should listen every day. That's right. Every day listeners is what we want here. Ikea. Talk about operational effectiveness. Ikea has decided it is killing, <clears throat> that's their word, this article that I love. I gotta tell you, I do enjoy it when, I do enjoy it when, when the word kill is in a publication. I don't know why, I just do. Ikea is killing off its famous catalog after 70 years. The retail giant's online growing, sales is growing 45% in the year of, in August, oh wait, 45% in the year to August, and it remains strong even as stores reopen after lockdown, which means what IKEA has determined is they don't need to put this very costly, very, very costly. How many were they printing? They were printing 200 million of them. 200 million of them at their peak. In 2016, 32 languages. What? That's that's not just a lot of paper, friends. That is an awful lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to be spending to get people to look at your catalog, to buy your products. And think about that cost of sale, the cost to sale ratio. It's got to be pretty high. That's a lot of a lot of those catalogs. I love, I love, love, love their line in this article. They're quoting, they're quoting the IKEA rep. And uh, the IKEA rep says that they're ditching the paper catalogs to help the company, the company with its ambition, ambition to be more environmentally friendly. You know what? I say good for you. I like the idea of being environmentally friendly. But between you and me, I say BS. If it made sense to continue to print those things on gold plates, they would print those things on gold plates. Uh, environmentally friendly. All right, all right. Now, I like companies that are environmentally friendly, but, I, you know, you just throw it in there, and I just kind of like, nah, I don't know. I remember years ago, there was a big environmental movement. You guys remember this. There was a big environmental movement to get rid of styrofoam cups. Do you remember that? I mean, styrofoam was evil, evil. I mean, it was worse than the than the Antichrist. I mean, I remember, I mean, people were marching in the streets over styrofoam use. They just wanted to ban it so bad. And so McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts and all the, you know, Burger King, all these fast food joints, they all got on board, you know, like it was, it, it became, it became, it became, you know, like this, this political softball where it's like, you know, it's better to just give in because even though there's going to be more cost to go with paper, everyone's going to be willing to buy the higher premium or higher cost product because they'll appreciate that 
It's, you know, we're using paper and not the styrofoam, which is super cheap and everyone's on board. Well, guess what? They went and they got rid of all the styrofoam and they went to paper cups and guess what we did? We complained. How dare you raise the prices? I'm not going to shop here. I'm going to bring my own coffee. I'm going to bring my own sandwich and McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts and Burger King and Wendy's and all these places. They're like, wait a minute, our sales are bottoming out. What's going on? So now I tell you that story to tell you this, my friends, you go to a coffee shop and you see if they have styrofoam coffee cups. I'll bet you a dollar to donuts. They do. They do. Because even though they were like, oh, we're going to, we're environmentally friendly here. And we uh, understand that the styrofoam is making a very big impact on the environment. And so out of the expense out of our own pockets, a tough decision, one that we didn't want to make, but uh, because, uh, because we're an environmentally conscious company here, we are going to stick to our guns, stick to our morals, and we're going to get rid of those damn styrofoam cups. Oh, wait, what? They're too expensive to pay for ones? Uh, check that. Can we just go back and put the styrofoam in place and not tell anyone? Yeah, you don't have to make an announcement. Just do it. Nobody knows more than Mary. Speaking of Mary, Australia. Austra yes, this is the way I decided to do a radio show. Australia. I'm all over the place. Australia has run out of Christmas trees. Uh-huh. Australia has run out of Christmas trees. Uh, people have had this, I'm quoting, people have had a tough year and they want to get to Christmas sooner than later. And so it's the first time that they have closed, they have sold out of Christmas tea trees in nearly 20 years since 2001. They have, they've not sold out of Christmas trees. And that's a big deal, friends, because not only is that a big deal for this year, it takes four to five years to grow a Christmas tree. And so if you're all out of Christmas trees this year, what's that going to look like next year? I mean, fake trees are going to be in. Real trees, I mean, there's a run on real trees in China. In China, they're also, they don't have any Christmas trees left this year. A real Christmas tree in China is going for more than $2,000. I have it here in the stack. I have it. I have the story. It's crazy. Not that story. Not this story. This story is about breakdancing. I can't wait to tell you all about breakdancing. I mean, <laughs> the next the next segment, we're going to get all into break. I'm going to, we're going to talk about my favorite dance movies of the 80s. And you wouldn't think that I had favorite dance movies in the 80s. But I'm going to tell you right now, you, my friend, are wrong. You're going to be sadly, sadly mistaken if you think I was not Dancing in the 80s. Oh, baby, was I dancing in the 80s. All right, let's talk. Let's go back to operational effectiveness. There's a couple of tips to make when you're talking about how to make sure that your business is operating at its best, at its fullest, at its maximum, as you're always constantly addressing. I can't stress this enough. We're always trying to be proactive. And that doesn't mean we're always capable. It doesn't mean we always get it right. But we are always trying our best to be proactive. We want to always try to see down the road what the problem is going to be, what issues could be arising so that we can succeed, so that we can be a better service to our customers. That's the whole point. So I'm going to give you a quick five little tips, five quick little tips on what you can be talking about, what you can be talking about, or <laughs> I'm reading a note from from the program director, Bill, he's telling me I should do a show on breakdancing, uh, a business show on breakdancing. <laughs> I'm going to. It's called the next segment. Stand by, my friend. Stand by. So tip number one is you have to be clear. Clear communication and having that – with that clear co communication, you're going to have transparency. And with that transparency is that it really starts to ripen for – collaboration. And that is, I think that is the the launching point. The first thing you should be doing is getting clear with how you're going to communicate, who you're going to communicate with, when you're going to communicate, how they can communicate with you. It's so super important. And then the next thing is you got to get your hands dirty. You've got to roll up your sleeves. You got to get in there and you've got to understand how your delivery system is working or you're not going to be able to figure out how to get it, how to make it better, how to manage it better. So understanding your delivery management is super important. From there, I would talk about, you know, I was just talking about it. I was just talking about how to learn best practices. That would be my next tip. The next tip would be focusing on knowledge, focusing on the people who are doing the job and trying to capitalize, and get them engaged with their knowledge and their points of view, asking, asking. 
I got to do a better job listening. All I do is spend all my time talking, but asking and listening and learning from the people who are actually doing the work is going to pay big, big dividends and trying to figure out what the best course of action you could be making. Oh my gosh. I just reached up and licked my finger and I'm going to tell you that it was so satisfying because all day I've had a mask on my face and every time I go to lick my finger, I end up licking the inside of the mask. That's right. Maybe I'm sharing too much. I actually, I have to get a new mask at this point because I've wet it from the inside. <laughs> tip number four, tip number four is to leverage innovation. And so when I was first thinking about this, I was thinking about technology. And anytime you think about innovation, you must think about technology. But I, I caution you not to because it's, it's too limiting. Innovation is meaningful change. And so we're just talking about meaningful change. So anytime you see the word innovation, say meaningful change. So level or leverage innovation, technology, resource management. Try to figure out what are their products or services or machinery or anything that can help you in your operation, make you more effective. That is the intention. And then, of course, you've got to focus on the outcome. You've got to focus on the outcome. You've got to focus on improving the employee and the customer engagement. You've got to make them both happy. You know, the only one I talk a lot about management and I got to tell you, we're always interested in how we rate managers or how do we do a management assessment. I'll tell you, there's only one group of people, only one. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. I don't care if you're in a service industry. I don't care if you're in a product industry. I don't care what industry you're in. There's only one group of people who will be honest with you and will tell you the truth. And they're the only ones with the clearest lens, the clearest lens to see. The only ones who can tell you whether or not you have a good manager, an effective manager. That is the customer. I don't care what the employee says. I don't care what the higher up say, the lower say, the, I, the supplier say. The customer, whatever the customer thinks of your manager is usually accurate. Not all the time. I'm not saying customers are always right. I am saying that they have a view of the manager that no one else has because they are the recipient of the product or the service, which is nothing that nobody else has. Doesn't mean that your staff isn't relevant for their input and others aren't relevant. They are but not as relevant as the customer. We'll be right back. <laughs> and the program director just said, and I quote, you are a psycho. Well, that's what you get. You hire me to be on the radio, you get a psycho. What am I gonna do? 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 All right, we'll start the next segment with a little bit of break dancing. We'll do some, we'll do some uh, recap of the '80s dance movies, which is gonna be so fun. And we'll talk about why 2021 could be could be the absolute best year for you to start a new business. India, are we still all good? I don't know why I keep asking you. I guess because I want to know. Is that thumbs up from a new one or is that the old thumbs up? I want another thumbs up. If you do me a favor, India, and give me a thumbs up every time I get off the air to say, you're doing really great. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> Somebody needs some attention. It's 145. We go live. At 147.30. You would think I would not need to keep looking at the timesheet, but you are wrong. <laughs> Thank you, India. She gave me a thumbs up. So. Thank you. It's funny. <laughs> I 
Uh, see, now she's just busting my chops. See how it goes? How quickly it ends. How quickly it ends. No, I should. I could. <sighs> All right, here we go. There we go. <clears throat> I wonder if you can hear this jackhammer behind me. I hope not. That's all I'm listening to. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the final segment of the Ralph Peterson Radio Show. And listen, do not be sad. This is only for a couple of days. And listen, if you miss me, if you want to see me, no problem. I'm here all the time. Just go to ralphpeterson.com. Go all the way to the bottom. There's a bunch of social media channels down there. You can follow me anywhere. You can send me a message. I'll send you one back. You can listen to past shows. Go to ibgr.network. Join the community of commerce. You'll get access to all the past shows. If you want to just go to the Ralph Peterson radio show, you can go there. You can get all the podcasts, all the past episodes. We have new podcasts coming up this week. It's going to be so fun. There's so much going on. So much going on. Did I tell you, by the way, Speaking of business, did I tell you that I started another course for the Ralph Peterson Management School of Management? That's right. I started a management school called the Ralph Peterson School of Management. You know who taught me to use my name on everything? A guy by the name of Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh was saying forever and ever and ever how important it was to use your own name. And so that is what I've been doing ever since. Shout out to Mr. Limbaugh, my favorite. <laughs> Anyway, so you can go to, or I started a new course on Ralph Peterson School of Management on housekeeping and laundry services for nursing homes. It's called the Standard Health and Rehab. Go to standardhealthandrehab.com. You can learn all about it. I'm telling you, you're going to be impressive. Maybe not as impressive as break dancing. Break dancing. Break. <laughs> In 2024 in Paris, France, over there on the other side of the world, the Olympics are coming, and this year in the Olympics, one of the one of the new games at the Olympics is going to be break dancing. That's right, break dancing. I <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I would have watched the Olympics as a kid if they were break dancing. I'm telling you, I would have because I was so caught up. Let's talk about the '80s and dance movies for just a quick minute. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I think it's hilarious. If you think about it, we had the Urban Cowboy. That was John Travolta and Sissy. Sissy Spacek or Spacek. Sp I don't know. We had Fame. Not, I'm telling you shows that were not my cup of tea. We had Flash Dance. I mean, no. These are all. Sorry. Didn't know how to shut the phone off. We had Urban Cowboy, we had Fame, we had Flashdance, we had Staying Alive, we had Footloose. Footloose. All right, listen, I'll say Footloose. I'll give you Footloose. Footloose was a cool movie. I liked Footloose. That was good. But Urban Cowboy, Fame, Staying Alive, Flashdance, Dirty Dancing, which would come out later in 87. I mean, no, 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 no. Not into it, not into it, not into it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I did not enjoy dance movies or dance like that at all. I was a metal kid. But what I'm going to tell you, when the movie that came out called Breakin' <laughs> or Breakin' 2, remember that song they had? It's called Electric Boogaloo. What the heck is an Electric Boogaloo? I had... I still don't know. I should have Googled it before this show. Like, what is an electric boogaloo? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, breaking, and then there was breaking to the electric boogaloo. I, I think it's great that breakdancing is going to be. It's going to be right up there with shuffleboard. I guess I don't know. It's going to be exciting. I wonder 
about so many things about how this is going to be a competition, how they're going to score it. I, I, how do you get into it? Can you, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But also I should put out there that there's also going to be surfing, skateboarding, and sport climbing. They're calling it, it's supposed to be rock climbing, but calling it sport climbing because I guess it's indoor. Maybe it's not rock. I don't know. But uh, all of these events, all three of these events are going to now be part of, or all four of these events are now going to be part of the Olympics in 2024. That uh, there will also be the Olympics. Oh, these are oh these three events are also going to be in the Tokyo Olympics in 2020 next year. Should have read that further. That's interesting. So next year you get some rock climbing, you get some skateboarding, and you get some surfing. Why not? You always said skiing or snowboarding. Why not surfing? Why not skateboarding? This can make make sense. Even rock climbing, but break dancing. All right, all right. Who am I? Who am I? Just, uh, um, um, listen, you know what it made me do? It made me want to go back and watch the watch the, the break-in and break-in two. That's right. See that? <laughs> Program director Bill is now filling my inbox full of uh, electric boogaloo information. He's uh, Somebody's Googled it. Now he's finding itself. It's pretty funny. Here we go. Three reasons. This is the crux of what I wanted to get into. Three reasons on why you should consider starting your own business in 2021. And I sincerely think that if you've got a good idea, if you've always wanted to do it, and you've got some things going on in your life that you know, especially, listen, with the coronavirus, the coronavirus it, it, it's caused maybe a lot of doubt for people, right? So maybe you shouldn't be doing it during a pan. Maybe this isn't the time to strike out on your own. Well, let me say this. The, there was a recession in 1957 and 1958 pretty terrible recession. And that's when Hyatt Hotel opened. They opened right in the middle of a recession. How's Hyatt Hotels doing? All right. Well, prior to the pandemic, that would have been a better better uh, example because they were doing really good. Microsoft, here's a better one. Microsoft was founded when there was an oil embargo. An oil embargo. That was a pretty big recession, 1973 to 1975. That's when Microsoft started. Again, he didn't pay attention to the climate of the of the, the political climate, political landscape. He had a great idea. He had a great product, great service. He knew he could go somewhere with it. And he did not let an oil embargo stop him. And then just think about this. The most recent recession we saw is from 2007 to 2009. You guys all remember it because it was very, very not that long ago. Let's talk about the startups that happened between 2007 and 2009. You ready for this list? All right. I'm only going to give you a couple. I'll give you two. Uber and Airbnb. Uber and Airbnb. Now, I would argue that Uber and Airbnb are two companies that just didn't start in during that recession, during the recession between 2007 and 2009. I would argue that they started because of the recession, because people were needing these alternative services as opposed to a expensive hotel or the expensive cab rides. They needed an alternative service. That's why Uber and Airbnb jettisoned so high so quickly because it was during a recession. And I say this time, 2021, it's going to be the same thing where, all right, so let me give you three. Here's my three reasons. My three reasons on why I think you should start a business in 2023, 2021. And by the way, you should be listening to the IBGR network the entire time because we're going to help. I'll help. Number one, increase access to people and talent. This one's big because there's a there's a there's a documentary on Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, and I think there was a piece done by Malcolm Gladwell, who is a writer. And Malcolm Gladwell was talking about maybe Malcolm Gladwell wrote about him in the word in the book Blink, hmm, or better. I'm not sure. Malcolm Gladwell did write about it. I know that's where I got this information from. Bill Gates was in high school right after World War II and the Korean War. So in that era, Bill Gates graduates high school, was in high school. Who was his math teacher? All right, so you don't know who, neither do I. It's not important actually who it was, but what they were. They were engineers. And why was an engineer, top level physics engineers, teaching regular 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade math at high schools? The reason is because there were no other jobs for them. And all the other regular math teachers were in war. 
Does that make sense? So there was an abundance of talent, people who were, who were willing to take jobs that were way beneath their ability because there were no other opportunities. That, my friends, I think is one important place that we are at right now where there is a lot of talent out there. There's been a lot of people laid off. I mean, mean brilliant people that are just looking for an opportunity, something to spark their curiosity, to put all their time and effort and energy in, and all their love and passion in. And if you can hook up with one of them, whoo, baby, this world will be yours in a heartbeat. 2021 will be yours. I guarantee it. Number two, the second reason that I would say that you should start a business in 2021 is because of fixed cost. Fixed costs are always the bane of any organization. They are costs that you can't get away from no matter what you do. You can't, it doesn't matter how smart and how fast and how, how streamlined you make your production line, that building is going to remain a fixed cost. Those employees are going to remain a fixed cost. That equipment's going to remain a fixed cost. Taxes, for the love of goodness. Well, they should. we wish they were a fixed cost. They keep going up the way they are. But there is a low entry point to fixed costs right now. Everything is super inexpensive. Office space is inexpensive. Rental space is inexpensive. Factory space, floor space. Everything is super inexpensive right now. It is the time. It's the time. I'm telling you. Be creative out there. It's, 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 there. it's yours for the taking. Number three, and finally, the third reason why I think you should start a business this year is because of what they call trisumerism. A trisumer is someone, it's consumer. Who tries everything? A trisumer. Because this in this climate, everybody is willing to try all kinds of you know how many phones that I have purchased before I settled on the phone that I have? Do you know how many? I mean, how many years I've been doing this? How many times I've been doing the doing the using a cell phone and to find which one is best for me, which one is for me, which one's not for me? How many how many let's talk about how many phones there have been? You know, let's just try it. Let's just try it. Let's do it. Good is better than done. That's something that I had to learn when I started my business. And that is, I was always trying to wait for everything to be perfect. Oh, it just has to be perfect. It has to be the right time. It has to be perfect. You know what? It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be the right time. Right now is your time. Take it. It's yours. There's so much opportunity out there. And if you find yourself in a position like I found myself in three years ago, I'm coming up on my third no, 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 fourth year. My gosh, I'm coming up on my fourth year of being in business. Knock on wood. I know I'm not out of the woods. I'm not done working. I'm not done putting my head down. And neither should you be. Let's go. Let's get to work. Thank you all for joining me here at the Ralph Peterson Radio Show. We'll see you next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Be there. <laughs>